Today we're going to take a look at two different file formats for exporting from Fusion 360 into Blender. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and uh, today I want to expand on a topic I touched on in previous series where we looked at taking design from Fusion 360 into Blender to create a lattice substructure. Well, there are a lot of different workflows where you might want to go from Fusion 360 to Blender. For example, if you want to do some physics simulation, or if you want to talk about creating rendered images. Now, Fusion 360 does have rendering, but there are, of course, limitations. And Blender has more rendering tools for things like motion or uh, any things like deformation or again the physical simulation. So what we want to talk about is a design that is a little bit complicated to do in Blender, something like a car rim. There are complications that happen in Blender and oftentimes it's just easier for you to create it in another system like Fusion 360. So we're going to take this design which you can download by going into the description of this video and then we're going to talk about OBJ format and 3MF format and the differences between getting those into Blender. So the first thing that I want to do is talk about exporting this design. To get the design out of Fusion 360, we're going to go to the file dropdown and we're going to take a look at export. I do want to note that there is a third format, an STL, which you can get to from 3D print or exporting as an STL. And that is an appropriate file format. Generally, you would use that to take to a 3D print utility. The benefit of using an STL is that we have more control over the mesh density when we're creating that export. That is going to be outside of what we're covering in this video. We're specifically looking at OBJ and 3MF and how we can get those into Blender. But keep in mind that there is that third STL format, and we will talk about that in a future video. So from the export menu, we want to take a look at the two main file formats that we're talking about in this video. 3MF, which is a 3D manufacturing file type, and OBJ. These two file types are very similar in nature because they will give you a mesh inside of Blender. But there are two main differences. Now, in general, a 3MF format was created for additive manufacturing, 3D printing. The benefit of the 3MF is supposed to be in the fact that it carries along material information. So we've set this design up in Fusion 360. It has a rubber appearance for the tire. It has a glossy white appearance for the rim. And also that same glossy white appearance has been applied to the raised letters on the tire. And then we have a silver or an aluminum material applied to the brake rotor. So when we export these as 3MF, they'll be saved on your local machine, same as OBJ. So for you to follow along, make sure that you do export both of those to your local machine. The next thing that we need to talk about is an add-in for Blender because OBJs can come in directly with the latest install and even well back to 2.8 and probably even some of the older 2.7 versions. But the 3MF requires us to have an add-in. So again, in the description of the video, you can take a look at the Blender 3MF format add-in and there are two links there, the main Blender 3MF format add-in, which gives you the basic information from GitHub, and then the version 1.0.1. .1. Version 1.0.1 .1 is going to be the zip file that you want. So make sure that you download this somewhere on your machine and that you can reference it when you're inside of Blender. Now that we've taken care of that and we have both our OBJ and our 3MF formats exported, let's go ahead and hop into Blender and see what we can do. Whenever we start a new Blender document, we automatically have this camera, this light, and this cube. And usually what people do is they'll start by just deleting everything. I'm not going to go that far. I'm going to leave everything in because I want to talk about a few different things that we need to understand about bringing designs into Blender. The first thing that we need to understand is the units and scale. On the right-hand side, we're going to select the scene properties and expand units. Here the default units are metric and the length is going to be in meters. This is going to be an important consideration because in Fusion 360, the default design that we have is in the units of inch. The rim is about 20 inches and that means that we're expecting it to be 20 inches when we bring it in. 
I want to show you that the units are going to be important because the scale is going to change depending on how we have our scene unit set. So first, let's talk about ways that we can get the add-in in Blender, and then we'll bring in our designs. We're going to go to Edit, Preferences, and we want to select Add-ons from the Preferences menu. In order to get your add-on, you want to go to Install, and you want to navigate to the location of your add-ins. Again, it's important to note that we want the Blender 3MF format 1.0.1 zip. You don't want the dash master zip. That will contain all the information you need, but the one that you need for the installation of the add-on is gonna be the 1.0.1. Once you have that installed, you'll notice that it's located under testing. This is currently in the process of being an official release or an official add-on. But at the time I'm filming this in October of 2021, it is still going to be listed under testing. So you want to make sure that you do enable that add-on once you have it listed under your install. Once it's labeled as an add-on and you've clicked it, we can go to import and you should see 3D manufacturing format listed at the very bottom. But before we use that 3MF format, let's start with using the OBJ. When we select OBJ, we need to locate the OBJ file that we're gonna use. Here I have two. I have an OBJ that I exported with the inch unit system from Fusion 360, and I also went ahead and exported the exact same document using the units of meters, so I knew that it exactly matched. So let's go ahead and grab the OBJ with the default inch, because that's probably what you ended up with. Notice that we do have some options in here for geometry and transform. You can see that we have split by object and split by group. We're going to leave all these as default. We're going to just talk about what comes in when we import that OBJ. As soon as we do, we can see the size as it relates to that original cube. Let's go ahead and rotate this around. And I want to start by going to my measure tool. And I'm going to press and hold down the left mouse button. And I'm going to do this about along the Y axis. So I have a good reference. I'm going to drag this all the way over to the right. And I'm going to let go. Notice that this comes in at 22 meters. Now, 22 meters is absolutely massive. For a 20 inch rim, we would expect it to be around half of meter. In order for us to rectify that, we need to modify our units or our scale or both. If I simply change this to a different unit system, first we're gonna to change to Imperial, then we're gonna change the unit system to inches. Notice that this is 868 inches. That is still relatively large. If we wanna bring this down to roughly the correct scale, we need to go down to something a bit smaller. Notice if I take it to 0 0.02, we're at about 17 inches. So we need to keep this in mind when we begin importing designs that as we start this process, the units in which we exported it is going to be an important consideration. For this, I'm gonna set it back to metric 1.0 for our scale and length in meters. And then I'm going to delete that measurement and I'm gonna go back to my selection dialog. Another important consideration that we want to understand when we're using an OBJ import is if we take a look at our scene collection, and we expand the Fusion Rim to Blender, notice that underneath this mesh, we have multiple materials listed. Enamel glossy white, we have our weathered rubber, we have bumpy rubber, and we have stainless steel satin. These are all different things that were applied in the Fusion Design workspace or in the render workspace. But you'll notice that these are all listed under a single object. If I were to select this object and hit tab on my keyboard to go into my edit mode, you can see that everything in here is one mesh object, even though I know in Fusion they were multiple components. There is something that we can do that is very helpful directly in Blender, and we can break these up into the, their individual components. There is a nuance here because of the raised white lettering on the Fusion letters on the tire, but what we can do is we can select the mesh, we can go into mesh, we can select separate, and then underneath separate, there's a separate by material. When we do this, you'll notice now in the scene collection, we have our rim, we also have the brake rotor, and we have the tire, and then we have the letters. I'm gonna hit tab to get off of the edit mode, and then I can select just the tire, for example. And you can see that I'm bringing in part of the tire if I hit tab again and I select the outside, you'll notice that it's bringing in this outside section. 
And this is because the final design that I exported had a bumpy rubber appearance applied to just the outside face of the tire. So this is an important thing that we need to understand when we're bringing these designs from Fusion to Blender. If you have these appearances applied to faces rather than the entire body or component, then it becomes a little bit more of a process for us to fix them downstream. For example, if I hide that outside section of the tire, you can see that we're left with the inside section and we have this sort of gap or this opening. Now, there are things that we can do here. We can hide some of those other components and then we can merge what's left. And we can do that with a couple of the other tools that we have, such as going into our edit mode. And we have options in mesh where again, we can do things like merge them together based on some distances. Uh, we also have options for things like faces, edges, and vertices. Uh, in this case, vertex is the menu title, but vertices for um, multiple vertex. And then we can use these tools to bring everything together based on their proximity, based on the selection or whatever. That's gonna be a little bit outside of what we're talking about in this video, but I do wanna just simply make you aware of the fact that when we bring in this OBJ, the appearances that we apply in Fusion can actually be used to split these back out to individual mesh bodies. And that can be extremely helpful. Now, let's take a look at the 3MF format. So we're gonna to go to File, we're gonna to go to Import, select 3MF. And again, we need to look for the file. And I have multiple 3MFs. Again, just go ahead and export one. Don't worry too much about the units right now. But when we export this, Let's go ahead and rotate this around. When we do this, you'll notice that there's this sort of weird box around the outside. There's this cube, and I'm gonna hide the cube. The reason that we have the cube is this is the cube that we start with in Blender. Now, we can instantly see the scale is quite a bit different. That OBJ in the 3MF, even though they were exported in the same inch unit system, if we go to our measure tool and we just simply take a look across the rim, we can see here that we're looking at about half a meter. This is the appropriate scale that we would expect to see. We would hope to see half a meter because that would give us a 20 inch rim. So instantly bringing the 3MF, the conversion between the inch export and bringing this in has been much cleaner. One thing you will note is that the tessellations or the triangulation of this mesh is a little bit different than what we had with the OBJ. Part of it's due to scale because this is quite a bit smaller than what the OBJ was. And if we zoom out and we simply bring back part of the original rim, you can see that this is the tire we brought in and this is the rotor that came in with the OBJ. So once again, massively different scale. So this means that the size of these mesh elements is quite a bit smaller. This is where using something like an STL can be extremely handy because we have control over those mesh element sizes. This still gives us a pretty good result. We have nice features. These are things that we can use in renders and we can smooth out, but there are inherent problems of taking these sort of prismatic CAD type geometries and, and applying modifiers like smoothing them out in Blender. Again, it's a little bit outside of what I wanna cover here, but I simply wanna mention the fact that bringing in this 3MF instantly gave us a little bit of a better result because we had everything broken apart and it's in the essentially the correct scale. Now, I think it's extremely important that we do understand the unit system. We understand not only the unit system in Blender, but what it's coming from in terms of Fusion 360 or any other CAD program. Now that we have a rim, the tire, the rotor, everything inside of Blender, this is the point where we can start taking a look at our camera view, if I hit zero, this is our camera view. Um, if I zoom in and I hold control, alt, and zero, I can set the camera view to my object, and then I can go into the different rendering views. And these will allow us to see the materials or appearances that are applied. And you can see right now, everything is white. If I hit zero again to go back to my standard view and I bring back, let's just bring back the rotor. And again, control alt zero to reset my camera view. And I take a look at the rendered image. Again, there's no appearance applied here, but these objects can easily have those appearances applied. We simply need to go to material properties and just pick whatever color or appearance or material we want. In this case, if we say that we want something that is glossy and uh, we maybe wanna change the color, we're gonna make it a little bit more uh, silver. We're gonna come down close to the center. 
then we go back. Um, we can see the differences between what we have here and what actually came in from Fusion 360. So just keep that in mind that there are a lot of nuances that have to happen in terms of bringing these objects in, but you can decide on the front end whether or not you want to use OBJ and you can bring in your object as a single design or a single mesh body and you can split it apart based on the appearances that you've applied or you can bring in, uh, in this case, you can bring in a 3MF format if you use that add-in and then you have all those mesh bodies split apart and you can work with them individually just from the get-go. There is at this point, there's really not a huge benefit of one over the other for me. I like the 3MF format um, generally because it should be able to bring the appearances with it. However, what I've noticed going from Fusion to Blender, that just simply isn't the case. Uh, it is nice for the OBJ if you go in and you apply unique or um, very easily identifiable appearances to the different bodies or components in Fusion when you have that OBJ and you modify the mesh by splitting it based on those materials, then at least you have that reference. You can see that this was supposed to be stainless steel. And I can go in and I can use um, different shaders. I can use uh, the node modifier and I can actually make that appearance what it's supposed to be. What I'm hoping from here is I'm hoping to cover bringing in an STL as well. Uh, it's not gonna be part of this video. I really wanted to focus on OBJ and I wanted to focus on the 3MF format because that is a little unique, but we're gonna also talk about STL and then I wanna take this into more of a rendering dialogue. I wanna talk about applying those appearances to an object and then what we can do from there. But at this point, make sure that you continue to play around with these options. You export from Fusion, um, you see what it does when you have bodies and components and you have appearances or you have multiple uh, multiple different objects and you just kind of see what happens in there and how you can make that workflow work for you. Um, I personally have had a lot of trouble trying to make um, a specific rim in Blender. It's been very problematic for me to stitch everything together and have those instances patterned around when I'm working in a larger file that has other elements in it. If you start directly at the origin and you're about the Y or the X axis, it's a little bit easier to do an array, but when you're trying to design these elements in an, uh, a design that has a bunch of other stuff, um, it's been problematic for me. So it's a lot easier for me to do that in Fusion or another CAD program and bring it in. And that's kind of what I like to use it for. But uh, I know there are a lot of different workflows. So if you have a unique workflow or something that um, you think works or you hope works, uh, just leave a comment below and I'll do my best to try to explore it. But uh, as always, thanks for watching and I hope you guys learned something. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.